Good afternoon, everybody. I think we've had a pretty good endorsement from uh, Claire. Thank you, Claire. No Appreciate that. I'm going to talk just a little bit about um, Techman as a company so that you can understand our approach um, and why we're working uh, closely with these guys from, from uh, Stafford, Stafford University. So Techman as a company, we're advanced material engineers. That means we work with um, a core of materials and we bring them together to form a new material. So we're not taking off the shelf products and just selling them or chopping them up or doing things to them. We are developing new materials all of the time. That's our kind of core DNA. I'm going to go through that. I'm going to talk quickly about our manufacturing capabilities, um, explain about us and our approach, and then we'll quickly go through the Easy Lift case study. I'm not going to talk too much about it because Claire's done a cracking job. Thank you, Claire. And apologies I wasn't here earlier. I had an incident with my vehicle. I'm going to remember this as a smashing trip. So, what do we mean by advanced engineering? Advanced materials, well, I've heard a lot in the short space of time I've been here about the tape. And of course, tape is just tape. It's sticky stuff, and it's stuff that you buy from a shop. But actually, there's a lot more to manufacturing tape than perhaps is uh, appreciated to start off with. So Techman as a company, we've got a core technical group. Um, so we understand the science of adhesion. We understand the chemistry of bonding, the physical properties of materials, and also the engineering challenges in the actual application. So if you wanted somebody to just create a new type of tape, no problem, but much better if, like um, Andrew and Claire and the team, they come to us with a problem. Then we can do the full works. We can actually develop the... Uh, the material and design the product as well to work. So um, as part of our innovation, as part of our creative focus, um, we've uh, won numerous Innovate UK grants for developing new technologies. And we are indeed, this isn't particularly helpful for you guys, but we are the proud owner of the strongest tape in the world. And if anyone wants to prove it, I've got some in my case. It's really good for sticking children to the chairs. OK, so our approach is that we believe anything is possible. So if you wanted something, I could pretty much guarantee one way or another we'd find a way to develop it for you. So I'm going to flick through these. Very kind of them to put animation in, but it's boring. So we've got in-house um, manufacturing capabilities. Um, our focus is on investing in R&D, in uh, new materials and obviously in our capabilities as well. Um, got an uh, R&D centre in the UK with our in-house laboratory for adhesive testing and development. So, sticky tape. Sticky tape is just two things, isn't it? It's sticky on one side and it's non-sticky on the other. But actually, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into sticky tape. There can be up to four elements, and I've put them in that order for a reason. So every adhesive tape has a carrier. It's the film. It can be multiple materials. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The second element that every adhesive tape has is an adhesive. It's a sticky. Now, very often, when you're developing an adhesive tape, the two aren't always compatible. So that doesn't want to stick to that. Okay? You might have a very light tack. You might want something that's really, really not very sticky, very light tack, just like a post-it note. Well, how are we going to get that to stick to the film and not come off? We don't want any residues. We don't want anything else happening. We want it to stay where it's meant to be. So you often have to put it in a binder. That's a chemical binder. Okay. 
Flip side of it, if it's really, really sticky and it sticks so well to that, well, guess what? When you wind it up onto a roll, you won't be able to unwind it. You have a big blob of sticky stuff that you can't do anything with. So then we have to add a release, which is very often silicon. So the film. The film can be numerous different materials. We work with polyester. We've got biaxially orientated polypropylene or mono, polyethylenes, PVCs, polyimide, if you need a high temperature resistance, 250 to 300 degrees C temperature resistance, or the easy lift film. And I'm not telling anybody what it is, Claire. <laughs> OK. And then, of course, the adhesive itself. I've put three main categories in there. We're talking about pressure sensitive adhesive, so that's what makes it feel sticky. It's a PSA. And there's three main categories, acrylic, rubber, and silicon. And there's lots and lots and lots of variations in each one of those categories. Won't bore you with them. So the easy lift challenge. OK. This is just an indicator. I'm going to flip through these. 2015. You said it was a long time, Claire. It's a long time. So uh, Staffordshire University were looking for a tape that didn't exist. They'd tried pretty much every type of tape, I think, that I had heard of and hadn't heard of, and they still hadn't found a non biofringent is that the right word? <laughs> UV, do-da, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hadn't found it. Now, in the UK, everybody knows what sellotape is. Does everybody here know what sellotape is? So that tape is the most common, the best sticky tape in the world. In fact, my dad had two things in his garage. He said he had sellotape and WD-40. Because if it moved and it shouldn't, you use sellotape. And if it didn't move and it should, you use WD-40. Anyway, in this case, sellotape didn't work for Claire. The biofringence was a big issue. So she came and spoke with Techman. Now, I'm not going to pretend for a minute that Techman understand what Claire was trying to do. We, we don't. But what we were able to do was take the information that she gave us and turn it into something that she wanted. That's where we come in. I don't understand anything about, I can't even say that micro word, micro, you know, that everybody else has been reeling off so nicely. OK, but I can develop an adhesive tape that meets the... Uh... So the solution came about through collaboration, which is excellent. If you have a problem and you've got the willingness to share the information, come and talk to us. We will be able to come up with a solution. Absolutely. So we worked with the team, the Easy Lift team, raw material manufacturers, part manufacturers, and indeed the users, the people that are actually going to be using the product. And we ended up with a very, very specific film, which has the properties that um, the team were looking for. And we developed the adhesive by talking to the team, by talking to the users. Do you want it stickier, softer, residue free? Do you want it to encase? the sample, or do you want the sample to just to sit on the top? Do you want the adhesive to flow? Do you want the adhesive to be hard? All of these things, once we've got that information, then we can start putting together a product. Then we've got the design considerations, where we look at who's going to be using it. We've talked about gloves. What about the environment? What are they going to do with the sample once it's been taken? So you take the tape lift, then what? Got a sticky thing. What are you going to do with it? So all of these aspects feed into Techman, and then what we come out with at the end was easy lift. There it is. You've actually got some, so you can come and have a put your hands on it later. Um, so just some of the um, features here, and as Claire indicated, we can pretty, pretty much put any feature. It took a little while to get through before Claire realised, oh, you mean if I think, if I want it, I can have it? 
And the answer is yes. If you want it, pretty much guarantee you can have it. So what we developed here with the handling tabs, as Claire alluded to, for the gloves non-adhesive area, we've put this perforation across here so you can break it off in sections. We can vary the length, the size. We can pretty much do anything with that. So when the final design um, is agreed uh, within the shuttle project, don't let the question be, if only we could do a tape that. Just tell us what you want the tape to do. We'll make it do it. It's no problem. So that's the front of it. Put the perforations in. We talked about varying lengths and all sorts of other, other sort of feed-in information. What came out was this. We've got the microscopically clear vision panel, which was, which was actually designed to fit a uh, microscope slide in the end. And then on the other side of it, so this is a release liner. This is a silicon release liner, which it peels off. And then on the back, obviously we've got a bit of branding, but then we've got this uh, writing space. This is a what if. What if, what if you could reapply the, um, the tape lift onto the release liner, so that keeps the tape lift intact. And then you can just, there's some space there for writing on whatever you want to put on there. I don't, I don't know what suckos we want to write in there, but sure it won't be pretty faces. And that concludes the um, that concludes the easy lift section of it. So yes, there is a lot more to adhesive tape than perhaps we we initially thought. Um, but absolutely, Techman is uh, more than happy to uh, develop something that meets everybody's requirements. So that was it. I ripped through it quickly. Any questions? Uh, one question uh, for for forensic people is often uh, the production of the tape. How can you how do you check, validate that the, the stickiness and the properties stay the same for all the production over the years? Do you have norms or things like that to to validate that? Well, the, the manufacture of the tape itself would be through the usual quality standards. So we make product for medical industry, pharmaceutical industry, healthcare. So we would, we would use the same quality manufacturing controls. Um, that would take into account adhesive coat weights, so the, the thickness of the layer. It would take into account um, the performance and the parameters so you test, you test, you have a retain from every manufacturing batch. You can, we can supply a certificate of analysis. So it's not just saying a certificate of conformance the product meets. It says this is what the actual data is. This is the parameters that we're working to and this is the actuals. Those are fairly regular practices, to be honest. Then when it comes to the manufacture of the actual component, if you like, the easy lift part of it, then we work in a, we wouldn't put it in the clean room. That would be too expensive doesn't justify it, but certainly we would put it in a designated clean area which has got um, a managed, uh, I could show you the, the slide, which manages, we've got a whole process which manages uh, the clean area so people are suited and protected and everything else, yeah, so it's, it's pretty standard process for Techman. DNA, um, non-DNA, absolutely, I've never heard of that before, <laughs> that question. But if anybody's specifically interested in uh, the tape and has concerns over the manufacturing, then absolutely you're more than welcome to come and visit and indeed come and audit. We're audited, audited pretty much every week by manufacturers, either medical or automotive. Your, your, your tape are manufactured in the UK or, or abroad? The, the, this particular tape is manufactured in the UK okay. and also converted into the finished part in the UK. Oh, fine. Um, how long can you certificate the properties of your products for cold case, for example? For what? Sorry. Cold case. Cold cases. So it, you, take a, uh, you might need to keep a sample. So take, 
Uh, for example, in the United Kingdom, if somebody is um, convicted of a serious crime, it would be expected that the, the samples are, are retained until any opportunity for appeal had gone. And obviously you need to also be confident that they can be stored in a fashion such that they're still analysable at the end of that period, and that could be for a protracted time. Or you could have a cold case, which is where nobody has been apprehended, and it might be 20 years since a murder, but the police are still interested to solve it, so they want to keep, keep the materials. So the question is, and I don't know the answer to this, I don't know whether you do, how do you ensure that the tape that is made uh, maintains its qualities for that period of time? when in storage. Okay, so I understand the question. Um, we've got to differentiate here because what, we're not, what you're not saying is how long will it be able to take traces, but how long will it retain them once it's taken? Am I, I'm correct in that? Yeah, okay. Um, pass. I don't, I, don't, I don't know the answer. What I do know is that the product will work for up to a period of time after manufacture, what we would call the shelf life. How long it would... What properties... You'd have to ask what properties are required from the tape over that 20-year 20, 20 period. Is it... It's all things like the optical clarity and those sorts of things. And my I'll guess give you is... An answer, yeah. Yeah. Very quickly, I'll give you an answer. So we've got easy lift soap from originally so from this version prototypes that we've had from about eight years so but based on certain this, this and we've kind of monitored them over time in terms of clarity so a change in color does it change in adhesive levels not in in a real quantitative way but in an observation of storage way we've not seen any changes um but i think this is a is a definitely a longer question in actually if it was 10 years or 20 years that that's got to be thought about as well but yes yeah, so we have keeping our eye on it i suppose is the point absolutely and of course <laughs> it's something we can replicate. So if we put that into an environmental chamber, for example, we can accelerate age the product and then have a look at um, whether there's some effect on the colouring, whether there's some discoloration from a UV exposure. But I would anticipate that they'd be retained in a closed, sealed area, not exposed to sunlight. So I guess we could simulate the, um, the retention method and have a look at, through accelerated ageing, what the effect on the tape would be, absolutely. But it's not something I know right now. Maybe the question was also, if you have a DNA traces inside the tape, well, the, the DNA traces will be useful uh, 10 years after. Maybe the, the tape has an advantage that you have no hair, no, no oxygen inside, so your DNA traces is preserved for 10 years or for 20 years, so maybe you have a less, better chance than a swab or another medium to, to get a, a result in a cold case. 